How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I've got the next one on my favourite trucks list, number three. It's good old Bruce. It's a little bit of a longer video so I managed to just about keep it under uh, 30 minutes but yeah, Bruce has earned it. He's earned half an hour. There's many reasons why I like this truck to be honest. There's many reasons why I ended up beating the Tager in the end. Not that there's anything against the Tager and to be fair this list of like my top favourite trucks I'd say the ones near the top of like I prefer to the ones near the bottom however it's not like a set in stone list it jumps around here and there depending what mood I'm in what I'm up to what sort of truck I want but I can't deny I do take Bruce out a hell of a lot mostly with the crane just because I do think it's one of the best crane vehicles in the game but I don't know it can just do a hell of a lot of stuff I mean even now driving along um, six pieces of cargo it's like nothing for it I could have got another trailer really and towed 10, but I've, I believe I already did that in the review video anyway, and yeah, it wasn't necessarily about that right now, I don't really have a lot of mission. I don't have any missions where I can, or I have to transport 10 pieces of cargo anyway, but just for messing around I might want to transport vehicles across the map, or fuel, do all sorts of random stuff, and uh, yeah, good old Bruce, just keeps going. See there, I thought it might be a bit iffy, but nailed all uh, all eight trees in a row, which is just nice. Obviously, if a tree gets in the way, you can just smack it out of the way. You don't have to try and reverse. Particularly if you have got a trailer like this, there can be a pain in the ass to reverse with that, like you know, the, the front axle kind of turns with it. They don't seem very suited to reversing in this game with those trailers. But when I did just reverse with Bruce, it pushes the trailer out of the way. Um, you can occasionally, it's not necessarily the fault of whatever truck you're reversing with, but I could tip the trailer over by reversing it, but I'll, uh, I'll take that risk. I more prefer the fact that if I need to, this thing can just reverse, shove the trailer wherever I need it to go, and I'm off. Um, yeah, nailed another eight trees in a row. Again, it was getting close. I left it in auto though. I could have put it in high gear, but with the advanced special gearbox, I assume the special would be slightly worse as well it was just uh, yeah it was better to leave it in auto it stays in auto at like fifth gear auto very nicely and uh, yeah I mean another thing it's got a hell of a lot of uh, pulling power like even up that hill I did try and take the piss about I believe I tried leaving it in high and um, yeah it eventually caught up with me I just put it in high low and it walked up there no problem I've done like I say towing another four slot behind me via the winch up there and it was just fine. I've towed all kinds of heavy stuff to be honest all over the map with this thing and uh, touch wood I don't think it's ever ever really failed me not like beyond what you'd expect within the mechanics of the game anyway. Obviously I've crashed it before I've, I'm not actually sure if I've ever rolled this I remember rolling it in the review off uh, one of the rocks but I can't actually remember ever rolling this by accident I mean it does sit quite nice and wide and low, it does seem like the perfect crane vehicle. Even though the cranes are a bit shit and weak at the minute, I'm kind of hoping, holding my breath, that they'll uh, update something or the next update that comes along um, in Mandri or in Madri, I can't even remember what the map's supposed to be called. I'm hoping it like somehow fixes the cranes or they just up the power of them. But again, that's not this truck's fault. It's not Bruce's fault, it's just the way the cranes are with everything. But, out of every truck I've driven, I believe this is the best crane vehicle. I mean, it even looks basically like a crane vehicle. But yeah, because it sits nice and low and wide, and then the legs on that crane sit out pretty damn wide as well. Like, what? especially when you've got the legs out, I'd say this thing's damn near impossible to tip. Like, the power of the winch would give up before it ever tries to tip over or anything. But as you can see there, it just muscles through the terrain pretty nicely. And as I've said before, and it's true, more often than not, I'd say a good two-thirds of this game, I prefer using trucks that are pretty fast. But then, when you tow in, like, pretty heavy loads, it kind of, like, you don't necessarily sit there at a high speed, especially on this sort of terrain, whether you've got a high range gearbox or a truck like this with the uh, advanced special so if I'm going to be kind of going slow slower and muscling my way through the terrain anyway then yeah something like this is a 
pretty good beast to take. Forget the time, by the way, because I, I smashed all them trees down and all sorts, so it wasn't like a speed run. I cut through that swampy bit near the petrol station. And you still do... You can get the nose caught still, but it's not a real issue anymore. It happens here and there every now and then, but it happens with loads of other vehicles as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's definitely got a big chin. That's why it's called Bruce. Bruce Forsyth. But, yeah, I don't know. They've obviously fixed it. I remember when I first got the game and uh, I bought this thing. And it used to catch on everything and it just wasn't worth the effort. It wasn't worth the hassle. It was like you spent your life stubbing your chin on something and then going back to first gear. And, yeah, it just wasn't worth it. But now it really isn't a problem for most situations. Um, as I was driving around, I seen this trailer, so I stuck it on the uh, sideboard, and again, this is another reason why I like Bruce. I mean, it's kind of related to the hauling power, but you can chuck all kinds of things on this. I'll show you in a minute, coming up, I had a little, uh, not really like a proper attempt, but I just stacked a few things on to see how much I could take the piss with it. And yeah, you can, again, put all sorts of stuff on this. If the cranes were strong enough to lift trucks onto a lot of the trailers I'd be able to like put yeah a couple of collabs on trailers and all sorts and this thing would pull it along just fine I reckon it's even going through there I've just gone past where I knocked them trees down kind of cutting back towards the garage I do it I was uh, not even paying attention at the minute and I <laughs> pretty much drove forward until the last second I tried to turn but yeah a lot of trucks just wouldn't like it and I'd say I suppose I've got the trailer now sitting on the back of me, but in terms of how you'd want to pack the cargo if you could, obviously you wouldn't want four slots of cargo on a trailer behind you and no weight on your own truck because there's nothing weighing it down into the ground as much, but particularly that it's got ten wheels, it, um, it has a hell of a lot of grip. I mean, it sort of makes sense, but it's like in this game you get like an extra grip bonus per axle for... Yeah, there's now 10 wheels that are trying to grip and claw their way through the terrain rather than, say, 6 with a fair amount of the trucks. So yeah, as you can see, I was uh, I got a little bit distracted, started chucking a load of things on Bruce, <laughs> just seeing how much I could stack on. I mean, I've not gone as mad as I could, I'll have to make a video called Chuckaroo or something, I'll see how many things I can stack on a Bruce, and uh, yeah, see if it can keep moving. I mean squeeze quite a lot of things in there that's what she said but I ended up actually saving the footage turning the game off and on because I kind of overdid it with a yellow loaf in the middle it started pushing the trailer and the uh, cocoa loaf off the back so uh, yeah I sort of set it back up like this put the yellow loaf uh, on the back of the first trailer I'm also winching now another trailer so I have got well I've got eight pieces of cargo but obviously I'm I've got a sideboard that could have held two that's kind of buried at the minute. I mean, look at it. What a goddamn Bruce of a vehicle. So what we got, we've got a uh, repair trailer at the front, which I pulled up with the crane on the on Bruce, but I've now got the crane disconnected because I'm obviously winching another trailer. Yeah, we've got um, a van repair trailer, uh, one loaf, two, three loafs, two, two slot sideboards, a radar trailer, a fuel trailer, Two ramp flatbeds, eight pieces of cargo, and I'm driving along just like normal. And don't get me wrong, I'm not necessarily recommending. The reason why I was kind of <laughs> trying to do this was, I mean, I didn't stack as much stuff on as this, I'll admit, but uh, I don't know. It was a little while ago now. It could have been two weeks. It could have been a month ago. I can't really remember, if I'm honest. Um, I went round with Bruce, and I grabbed a load of trailers, and I ended up stacking, yeah, a couple of sideboards on the back, and I was just kind of doing a little lap of where I'd been messing around and I'd just left loads of trailers lying around and I scooped loads of them up with Bruce, took about five or six trailers back to the garage but some of them were just like more smaller trailers, it wasn't as crazy as this and again I, I wouldn't be able to achieve this with just the little crane on the back but yeah, I mean there isn't many trucks that you could <laughs> stack all this sort of stuff on and just keep driving like normal whereas this thing, even though it is relatively on the slower end because of the advanced special it's uh, ticking along pretty nicely however got our first casualty Coca Loaf is going, he's took a trailer with him look at him, goddamn horse of a vehicle landed the trailer 
It's like Tony Hawk loaf skating. And then we're off going back uh, just for a little lap of the farm. Uh, at this point I was kind of curious myself to see how much I could take the piss. I actually, again, I messed around doing something else. Uh, I saved the footage, reloaded the game because I forgot to bring my other trailer that I was winching. So I kind of left it further back there a little bit. But I've, uh, I've got it back on me now. And even cutting through here, I mean, I'm going through that muddy bit where you grab cargo from the farm. And it's certainly slowing me down a little bit. I'm obviously losing a bit of speed to wheel spin and stuff. But I'm in high-low. And that's what I do like about either the low-range gears or high gear. Is Obviously, high gear you, it is possible to stall and you can dip the revs. But generally speaking, if you can get in high gear, you kind of get 100% of your power or nothing. And it goes back to stalling, but... Yeah, there's not not really any half measures once you're in the rev range of each specific low range or high. It's just I like it. It's more that's why I use the high range gearbox with the high gear in a lot of trucks because once you put it into high gear, it muscles through a lot of terrain that in auto and all sorts. Even if you've got diffs always on it, uh, yeah, will struggle. So another reason why I like it, and not too many vehicles have this, uh, the maintenance repair body I can actually stick on the back of this is the same size as the uh, maintenance like trailers because just uh, like I didn't know this for a while but with normal trucks the maintenance add-on you can put on the truck has got less points and everything than a, the equivalent of the trailer it's the same with the van repair body in fact the van repair body is a lot worse on trucks because the one that you can have as an add-on has like 800 repair points the one if you tow a trailer as an as a van repair body trailer thing, whatever the bloody hell they call it, uh, like the one I had on Bruce, like wearing like a hat a minute ago, uh, that has fifteen hundred points, so it's almost double. That's an extra seven hundred repair points, which is insane. That's like double the repair points. This thing's got. It's not as bad with the uh, like maintenance add-on versus the maintenance trailer. I think this one's got 2,000 litres and 350 points and six tyres and a normal one has something like 1,400 litres, 300 repair points and five tyres so it loses like 600 litres, 50 repair points and a tyre or something like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that's what I was saying <laughs> is like the P12 can have that large maintenance add-on, this can have the large maintenance add-on. But most things, yeah, just smaller, so it's just another little advantage, a nice thing about it. And going along here, I'll put the crane on at this point. Like, again, this is mostly what I use the crane for. Uh, the only reason I've not really done a whole lot of crane footage or anything in this video is... Even though it is a great crane truck, it's, yeah, like, there's more to it than just the crane. I could put a crane on a lot of things that'll get me by for the average thing I'm doing. So... I didn't want to really take up too much of the video with just me lifting things with a crane because like I say they they seem to have made them pretty weak at the minute and it's not really a reflection of this truck or any others. Going through there though that was the Zimnigors path and I'm not saying it's the best through stuff like that I wouldn't expect it to be because it's a pretty long chassis like yeah it's not really designed to be like an off-road specific truck but it drove through that mud very nicely because it's got the 10 wheels, it grips very well. I also definitely like about this truck, which makes more of a difference than it'd get credit for, is the rear steer. Like, just having the ability to have rear steer, it's not just... It's better than having a deeper steering angle, even though it has got a pretty decent steering angle as well, because it's not then just swinging the nose of your vehicle round, it's like swinging the back end round more than obviously it normally would and it not just makes the corners tighter but I don't know it's just so much nicer to drive to yeah maneuver around considering it's a pretty long chassis vehicle with 10 wheels and all sorts I mean look cutting through there it actually got down in that ditch and back up the other side clipped the chin a little bit but nothing to write home about but yeah I made a nice steering angle made it back onto the road didn't have to do a three point turn or anything which three point turn is not the end of the world but when you've got a trailer or even worse like I was doing earlier if you tow in a trailer and winch in another one then trying to reverse a truck length 
can now end up costing you an hour or two <laughs> when you flip flip one of the trailers and now you've got to bring a crane vehicle to stack it all back up and all sorts. So, yeah, I do like the rear steer. I like the rear steer on the Derry. It's a shame up to now that the Derry is as disappointing as it is because it's got very nice steering. As for going through the ice, I wouldn't say, well, it's pretty good as far as, like, it's got a hell of a lot of grip and power and all the rest of it. But this ice is just, like I've said before, it's a troll. Once you get to that point, it's just having none of it. I put a fuel tank on the back to add a bit of weight to it, but... Again, it drives like that's not even on the back, so it's one of the future. If you wanted to use that sort of uh, fuel container, personally, I'd just stick a maintenance add-on on. Because then you've got some repair points and tyres as well. But, yeah, it's not really affected. So, I mean, of course, had to uh, call me up some horses get them down, used them as a wedge, I knew it was absolutely stuck solid in that ice, and I've been wanting to try that for a while to be honest, just bringing a few loaves, obviously everyone needs a loaf, get yourself a loaf, I mean I've got about 12 loaves I think, I need to get 13 for the true baker's dozen as someone said, it's very true, um, yeah I could have just kept queuing loaves up there, so I'll be able to tow anything out <laughs> at any point, there is nothing that the loaf can't handle. And a Bruce and a loaf. It's a dangerous combination. So I've just gone through, I believe, all the ice and that as I'm heading, I suppose, heading back to where the TUZ-16 is, uh, going towards the cliffs. Going through this cutout. It's not too bad down here. Those rocks that are in the way, they're a bit of an awkward sod at times. They, uh, I think they made my club tip off my like road train thing I made the other week. I was heading down here, I apologise that that wasn't an edit, it was just a glitch. Yeah, got a little bit wide there, <laughs> got a little bit tasty for a second, but we're all good. Again, rear steer, so it did swing the back end around as well, which... I mean, it's not swinging it around to the point where it'd, like, suddenly send me off the cliff. I did go a little bit wide, and I let go of the steering kind of halfway through, so I had to, like, refeed it back in, but... Yeah, made it round there, no problems. Again, loaf. He's sitting good in the uh, sideboard. But because this truck sits so nice and wide, it kind of... The loaf can then benefit a bit from that as well, that this thing doesn't try and shift its weight over to the side and try and tip. It's like, it's almost trying to just flick its way back to horizontal. And uh, yeah, the loaf's pretty happy just to sit there. See, so climbing over these rocks as well, considering it's got a pretty long chassis, and it can be a bit of an awkward sod over rocks, but all things considered, um, like the power of it, and again the 10 wheel grip, kind of makes up quite a lot for that. So going through here as well, I did end up stalling, but it was just again, it's like the mechanics of the game, I pretty much got stopped dead for a second, so I had to put it in a uh, high-low. But yeah, it wrestled its way through there, which considering the width of, width of the vehicle, it did pretty well through there, even like I've had the dolphin caught through there, I've had all sorts like I've drove through there that has got caught up, it's kind of like yeah, a bit of a narrow rock channel that also goes around a corner, which really doesn't help so I'm just going back the other way on the cliff now but that like rock ledge I just climbed up, it went up there with no hassles <laughs> again for some reason I was uh, going a little bit wide I didn't mean to hit anything with the winch there, it was just like a reflex action at this point. But again, rear steer, it swung my uh, nose round very nicely. Got the back end round and it kind of re-leveled me up, whereas if you've only got front steering, which is the case with most trucks, really I'd have to try and back up to try and cut it in earlier and get the back end to follow me around like a bit tighter rather than, yeah, going wide. And uh, this does it. And even everywhere I've took this, really, every mission I've ever done with it, like, it's not the fastest overall. It depends what you're doing, but there is certain situations where, of course, I'd take a different truck uh, that I can get up into the high-range gearbox. But, like I said, for heavy hauling, I assume this thing can tow the special objective trailers. So that's another reason why another people have said the same. I'd like them to reset the missions. Uh, when I played through this game, I did... 
uh, the special objective trailers relatively early, not all of them, and I kind of did save one or two for another week or so, but yeah, essentially there was only like, I don't know, less than ten to do in the whole game. Uh, I've done them all now, but I did them all with trucks that I find, I did it with like the Navistar, I did do the last one I saved, I did with a P16, but I found that on Drummond Island, which is still going back a fair old way. Um, yeah, there's nothing left like that's pretty crazy and challenging for trucks like this. And I know in the next update they are adding what I believe is essentially like a special objective trailer flatbed. I believe it's the same size and proportions as one of them. I assume it's going to need the saddle high. Um, yeah, and that'll make trucks, not just this, like the Colob and the P16 and stuff like that, more relevant as well. But yeah, this is one that I'd like to try it out with because I don't know, it's just a bit of a bit of a dark horse when it comes to a bit of off-roading. Particularly that it got kind of given a bad name because of its chin at the start. It's a little bit I suppose with the club flat face as well. That used to get caught a lot worse than it does now and it put a lot of people off me included. I avoided it for ages. I mean it was one of the last vehicles I reviewed in the end because I just avoided it for so long and luckily one of the reasons I did avoid it was hoping that they'd fix the uh, catching issue and they did. See again, slaps trees down, which of course, <laughs> if you have seen my videos, you know I love a good bit of tree killing. But flying down that hill, if I wasn't paying attention, I had a load of cargo behind me and all sorts. I did this yonks ago near the beginning of the game, but I had a trailer with cargo on. I hit a tree and I just sprung backwards off it and between like yeah me basically going from stopping dead to being fired backwards by this tree um, my trailer tipped my cargo went everywhere and it was just a goddamn nightmare whereas just simply having a truck that can smash through a tree instead and save your bacon did you see there though I mean I believe I was in auto uh, in the end I dropped it up to high low but it didn't really have any issues, it was even just about scraping its chin then through the mud as well, and it still did pretty uh, pretty well all things considered. Just some random damage. To be honest, that's one of the few times uh, tonight that I got random damage on this. It does happen, it, like it happens with any truck because of the damage mechanics at the minute. But I'd say overall this one avoids it well because it's got the advanced special, so it's not not always going fast enough to where that can happen. But the other thing is... It's got a very nice amount of points on its engine and suspension and everything compared to some vehicles. And although it may not be a major thing, uh, I just crashed into that lamppost, didn't take any damage. It doesn't take engine damage out. You can have a bit of a trollish hit and all sorts, but like there, one damage. But I've done loads of times where I've crashed into some at, at full speed and I, I don't take any damage, which is pretty handy because. <laughs> You've seen how I drive. I'm cutting through here as well. I don't usually do a lot of footage of this swampy bit because it is pretty damn hard to drive through even with uh, quite a lot of the decent trucks. So I did cut the middle bit out there but where I am is just kind of near that Black River crossing. There's a few kind of lake swampy areas nearby. And yeah, most trucks get absolutely nailed in there. The Tager I actually drove through there, I believe, on that video, but most trucks just ain't having it. Whereas this thing, I mean, it was slow again, but it did it. That's the main thing, as long as I can get through and out the other side. And yeah, as you can see, it's just relatively hassle-free. Like, if I'm not in a rush to go anywhere, if I'm more enjoying, like, the route I've got to take on the way, rather than sometimes I'm just in a rush and I'm not fussed about getting there sort of thing I just want to be there <laughs> and then I'll uh, yeah get a faster truck but you see tipping over or lack of tipping over I mean the mud now is pretty boggy but there's enough tyres to grip through it and another thing actually that this thing doesn't really I wouldn't say it doesn't get credit for but it's actually pretty good is uh, the size of the fuel tank 350 litres but on top of that, it doesn't actually use a hell of a lot of fuel. Like, you see when I'm driving along, it can blip up to, like, the 15, 20 mark. But generally speaking, once you're in fifth gear and you're just ticking along, it sits near a 10, 15. 
but yeah, because it's got 350 litres, I mean, I've edited bits out so you wouldn't necessarily know how much driving I've done prior to each like clip that I've put in here, where you can see how much the fuel's gone, but yeah, when I've been driving away from the garage and stuff, like you can see it just hardly touches the fuel. And I think it was even trucks like, is it the GMC 9500? I'm sure even that goes up to like 15 or 20 litres a minute when you're in like the high gear and you're trying to scramble over rough terrain and that. Obviously it, do, it can make a bit of a difference. Like clawing through here now is obviously going to use a hell of a lot more fuel than driving down say the White Valley runway. But overall, just something with this. I like. I rarely have to refuel it. There's a very high chance I've done everything I'm going to do for the night, and I'm probably just going to recover it to the garage. But of course, I got a loaf with me just in case. Like repair point, I could get a trollish hit on the floor. I suppose one thing they have updated, other than just the damage mechanics. And I remember saying this to someone, I believe, like careful what you wish for. But right near the start of the game, you could burst tires, and they just wouldn't really matter. It'd look flat but it wouldn't do anything now they kind of and I remember someone said oh they, they could probably do with up in the uh, how much a flat tire affects you <laughs> and now they're like little anchors on the floor once you pop a tire and not that I'm complaining at all I actually think it was yeah like a pretty sensible decision given the mechanics of the game and everything I did used to burst a tire and not really care to be honest it's not really crazy now but that's just another reason why I always take a low for me it's always got I believe it's four spare tyres on it as it is. I can obviously put a spare tyre in the back of the loaf. Uh, yeah, I just drove through that snow as well. It actually went pretty quick through that snow, considering it was like that super snow section. It's usually a bit of a troll. The only other vehicle I've found... In fact, I won't say I won't mention it for now, because <laughs> it's going to be coming up pretty soon anyway. But there is another vehicle that I went through that snow very nicely in. And you see, even here with the ice... I only got one side of the bumper core, and I still believe at any minute I could have had a trollish moment where a piece of ice just locks into place and it kind of stops me, but with one kind of the left bank of tyres in the ice, the right bank, I kept nice and close to that telegraph pole because I know it doesn't really break around there. And uh, yeah, slow and steady, but I was able to muscle my way through the ice, back out the other side, didn't need uh, any winches or anything. I mean, this is pretty flat snow now, so I wouldn't really expect it to struggle here. But in front of me is the train station. And I'm now just going to cut off to the right. Uh, again, this is kind of the path that you can do on uh, the overturned train carriage. Well, it's one of the paths you can do anyway. It's the one I tended to do. It seems like a pretty direct route. I believe this abandoned building here, only it's the track to the left of me. Uh, you have to go through here for a mission called Rural Spelunka or something. I think this was like called an old abandoned warehouse or whatever it was named, but that's basically where I am. But if I was doing that Rural Spelunka mission, I mean this thing is, uh, yeah, just no problems really. But it still feels, I don't know, something does feel nice about it to drive. It doesn't just feel like it's walking over everything like it's not you know like I don't know it's not really being affected by the game it sort of feels like it does I mean funnily enough the Tatrin as much as I like the Tatrin like it's, it can almost be a victim of its own ability across some terrains like because it's so slow on the road but then it's just as quick off off road and that you kind of sometimes after driving it I just feel it's like meh I'm just going to point it in that direction and 10 minutes later I'll be over there, but yeah, it's like it's not the most engaging of vehicles, it's just sort of like, it can be a bit boring on road because it's so slow, and then it can be a bit boring off road because it just, most normal application is just going to drive through at the speed it goes, whereas yeah, this still feels a bit nuanced, like, can be a bit of a challenge, particularly with the bumper and the fact that it's a pretty long vehicle. So I just like driving it, it just feels fun. I think with this game as well, I naturally like the bigger trucks and stuff because it's just cooler to me. It's like, that's what I like, driving massive trucks around and stuff. But yeah, that's about it for today. Get yourself a Bruce. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.
and I'll be back soon. Of course, get yourself a loaf as well, it's goddamn professional. <laughs>